good Saturday morning. It's Valerie with Soap Underground. Um, I'm doing a video this morning. Um, it's a remake of one that I did a couple of years ago called The Beachcomber. And I'm hoping it's going to look a little different this time. The last time it didn't do what I wanted it to. So it wound up being just a plain white bar of soap, which was beautiful, uh, with some clay colorants on top. And I engraved it, if you will, with a little seashell imprint. Um, but what I was hoping back then was to call it Pebble Beach because I wanted to be able to get little droplets of different colored soap to look like there was there were little pebbles li lying on the beach well I was a fairly new soaper back then well it's been probably two years ago and I've been soaping for four years but anyway with design not being my strong suit it didn't go so well so I'm hoping today to be able to make that happen and what I've decided to use to maybe get my um, little pebble looks are these two different size funnels. Um, I even have a smaller one, but it's going to depend on, of course, how fluid uh, the soap stays. Um, I also have a hair color bottle that I, I used to, I retired from hairstyling about three years ago. But I don't think, unless I were to cut this tip off, that it would flow through there very well. But I thought I had a turkey baster, and I went upstairs to get it, and I can't find it. I thought, you know, I could do it with that. So, anyway, the only other thing I came up with were the funnels. So, we'll see. So, what I hope to do is to layer, put a layer of the natural, and then do some um, little dollops of different colored clays and then top it with white and then repeat the process so that it looks like little pebbles lying around. Um, and what I'm using for colorants today is my purple clay, Brazilian purple clay or purple Brazilian clay, however you say it. Um, and I infused, I mixed it with some infused alkanet um, almond oil, so that will be part of the super fat. My rose clay, I mixed with some of my matter root infusion, um, also in almond oil. And my gold clay, I mixed with some infused turmeric. Um, I think this one was this one might have been olive oil. Anyway, that's what I'm using for my colorants. And then, of course, I'll add a little on top. My recipe today is um, an oldie but a goodie. It's 10% castor, 10% <clears throat> cocoa butter, 15, 16% coconut oil, 15% lard, Crisco, I'm sorry, Crisco. 30% lard and 19% olive oil and um, my numbers were 38 for the hardness 11 for the cleansing 57 for the conditioning uh, 20 for the bubbly and a 36 for the creamy um, my total INS number was up 140 so, I, I love using small amounts of Crisco, and um, right now my oils, um, my crock pot's on low, and my oils are, uh, let's see, 165. So, I'm going to um, mix up my lye. This will probably start a little hotter than I wanted, but that happens sometimes. <clears throat> probably start this around 180. Um, so, I will see you shortly. 
Well, my oils are at 172 and my lye water is at 176. So I am going to go ahead and get started. Um, I have on my gloves, my long sleeves, and my safety goggles are going on now. It's real important to use your safety gear. Um, I know it's not for everyone, but it is advised. Um, I admit sometimes I'm guilty because I wear eyeglasses. Well, I don't really need to, and I, I need to do better. Um, also, always make sure that you start with a clean work area. That's very important. So I'm going to pour this down the shaft of my stick blender, and that just helps to keep it from splashing up. Um, in cold process, it's more important for less air bubbles, which isn't quite as important as hot process. Um, so the main reason I do it is just to keep it from splashing up on me. And it does help. In my heated oils, I have colloidal oatmeal and kale and clay. And today I just used plain water for the lye liquid and um, some infused... Um, no, I'm sorry. Some Tussa Silk. I'm going to be adding an ounce of coconut milk during the stick blend. So I'm going to go ahead and just give it a couple of pulses to get it going and then I'll add my coconut milk. going to add about an ounce of that because I want to keep the rest of it for after the cook. And you can see until it starts to get a little thicker, it has a tendency to splash out. So that's why I go so slowly. Plus it's only a two pound batch. So, I'm going to bring this to a medium trace. It's already at a light trace, and you can see it's um, the oils are adhering to the um, head of the stick blender, so we're at a thick, tr a, a light trace. <laughs> So creamy looking. I love using Crisco with my lard. Um, just gives it a, a creaminess. The first soap I ever made was using like 16 ounces of Crisco. <laughs> the first hot process that I ever made. Now I usually keep it to 10 to 15 percent. We're at a medium, but I'm going to go just a little bit far, further. Yeah, that's good. 
going to leave it plugged in though just in case I have to go back and stick blend it again in case it separates a lot. It may and it may not. Sometimes when I use a lot of lard it will um, especially with hot temperatures but this one wasn't started as hot as some so we'll see what happens. Um, I woke up at 3.30 this morning and I could not get back to sleep. I, I turned on the TV and watched a few things and I, I kept thinking maybe I should go down in the soap room and make this soap. But I thought, well, maybe not. Even though I felt like I was wide awake, I, I just thought it might be <laughs> a little risky to try soaping at 3.30 in the morning. Um, but I, I realized that it was because my daughter and my granddaughter moved back to their home yesterday. And that, you know, and, I, and when I say this, I, I don't mean it in any unkind way. It, it was time for her to go. She's 35. She didn't like living here. You know, and I get that. I mean, once she was past the intensive care that she needed exclusively, um, you know, she felt closed in. But it's very hard to let our granddaughter go. Um, I guess, and she was apprehensive about going, you know, is mommy still, is she really ready to take care of me? But my granddaughter's doing great, so is my daughter. Um, my husband and I, on the other hand, are feeling, okay, what do we do? For eight months almost, it's been always something. And now, you know, two animals left with them. So there's, there's just a quietness and a barren look. Um, because people talk about the new normal. There is no new normal. Nothing will ever be normal again. It's just you learn to live your life in a different way. Normal doesn't touch what we're feeling. So, um, anyway, you may be seeing more of me because I'll have more time on my hands. And, um... I'll just ask you to keep me in your positive thoughts and your prayers. And um, I will come back when this starts to cook. My batter's starting to um, rise up. I always say that this reminds me of a souffle. Um, and it's, I just love this color. So I'm going to stir it down. Scrape down my sides. It, it's not trying to force itself out, so that's a good thing. I don't have to feel as though I need to stay right, you know, stir it down constantly. I am anticipating some separation, though, just by what I'm seeing. So, um going to take my temperature. We're at applesauce stage. And I'm at 218. So I'm going to cut it off, but I'm going to leave it in the cooking unit for now. Um, I don't want it to get too hot or much hotter than it is. But yet I want to leave it in here long enough, you know, just to keep it cooler. I mean, warmer, so that I don't have to, you know, start and restop, start and restart. Um, but there is quite a bit of separation. And 
I may stick blend again and it may, I might just use my whisk. Um, sometimes I find that that's easier to do. So I'm just gonna whisk it a little bit and see if it goes, you know, back into control <laughs> and get it back together without using the stick blender again. And I'm still at 218, so it's holding its own, and that's a good thing. So I'm really, right now, I'm just going to scrape it down, and I'm going to cover it back up. And I'm just going to leave it alone and see what happens. Um, I'm going to probably bring you back in about five minutes and see where we are, just so that this video doesn't go so long, because... I have a feeling that the design part is going to take a little while, and I know you don't want to spend 45 minutes watching me. So I'm just going to see what happens, and um, I'll see you shortly. Well, during the break, I got a phone call of something that I need to do before long. So I, rather than waiting, I'm just going to go ahead and try to stick blend it back together because it is separating pretty a good amount so um, because I have this that I need to do and it's going to take a little while to design it I'm going to go ahead and try to finish it off like this and I'm just giving little bursts of power so that I don't burn out my stick blender and I really feel like within three or four minutes I'm going to be at Vaseline anyway, just because of the way it looks now. Probably get another small vol volcano. But no worries, I'm right here, so. And that did go back in pretty well. I'm, I'm, I can see I'm between a mashed potato and a Vaseline. And my temperatures are at 219 and the crock pot is off so I'm not losing any any heat so we're good and I did do this at 38 percent lye liquid so that I can try and do a little design if I see it's not going to work I'm just going to ax it and you know, do what I did before. Still at 219. And I am to the stage, it's looking like I can go ahead and take a little bit out and do the zap test. and see if I'm neutral because it is between a Vaseline and a mashed potato. So I have my little popsicle stick. I'm going to take a little bit out. I always swirl it through get a little bit on the stick and lay it to the side to cool down before I stick it to my tongue. And I'm going to give this a little bit of a spritz with my warm mist 
because I don't like it sticking to my sides. And this is a great tip from Valerie Mosher. Um, and it just keeps it from, and you don't wind up with all those little hard pieces in, of um, that cook on the sides. You don't want those in your batter, in your finished soap. So spraying down those sides with warm, a warm mist really, really makes a difference. My, my batter is at, um, it's completely neutral. There was no zap, gloves are off. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna add is my 1% of super fat. And this is chamomile infused almond oil. Um, I'm getting a little worried because my batter seems to have gone change color and I'm really I, for those of you who watch my videos you know that sometimes after it reaches Vaseline for whatever reason it takes on a green tint it, it usually goes back to its a lighter color but I've not been able to pinpoint it unless it's a temperature change or using the water Maybe it's not quite hot enough. Um, when I first, you know, the first few squirts I use it, I don't know. But anyway, that was 1% of chamomile infused almond oil. I super fatted the entire recipe up front at 5%. And now I'm going to add in the two ounces of coconut milk that is hot that I withheld from the beginning of the formula to add nail. That's one of the beauties, just one of the beauties of coconut, um, hot process soap making is the way you can add things and when and how and what. Um, that's, that's just why the hot process is my, my first love. But of course, everybody is different. And this is a really thick batter. <laughs> so we're going to see if I'm going to be able to do what I want to do. It might just be that I have to... Well, I haven't added my yogurt in yet. Usually, yogurt's the next thing I add. I don't know why that left me. But stir this in really well, your milk and your yogurt because the crock pot is still really hot and it will cook. I've had that happen a couple of times and you can't undo that. I mean, you just have to pick through and try to pick out any cooked pieces of milk or yogurt and Okay. You can probably see the steam coming off. And this is my two tablespoons of room temperature yogurt. It's one tablespoon per pound of oil. It's a two pound batch. And yogurt, of course, is just a lovely additive. Um, it helps with fluidity. It's also a great addition of dairy um, if you're not vegan. I have used the coconut yogurt before. Um, was all I could do not to eat the yogurt rather than adding it to the soap. But I stir it in really well too. And my batter's turning back a decent color. And I'm going to check my temperature because the next thing that I want to add is my, I, I decided to use one tablespoon of honey and one tablespoon of sugar. And I'm doing two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and one tablespoon of sodium lactate. And that will really probably thin this down quite a bit. They're excellent for the skin. 
but I don't want to add my honey, even though I've got it mixed with something else. Well, it says I'm down to 168. I don't usually add it if it's above 170. Um, and that's another thing about adding honey in your hot process soap. You can, you can put it with a liquid and it works so much better. So in that goes. And I'm getting a phone call that I need to answer. It's my daughter, so I'm going to bring you back. I'm sorry about that. I just went ahead and that was my daughter calling, and I was afraid not to answer. But I am mixing up my um, rose clay that I infused with, um, that I mixed with some infused matter root. And that is so pretty. And the next one I'm going to do is my gold clay that I mixed with turmeric infused olive oil. And these cups have been kept heated. Now, I'm not doing a whole lot simply because I want, you know, I don't want it to be overpowering. I just want a few drops of each color here and there. I'm scenting today with um, patchouli, eucalyptus, and bergamot. I had used this before and a couple of people said it was their favorite. And this is my purple Brazilian clay that I mixed with Alkanet almond oil. And I'm just going to add, just like I said, just a little bit. I love purple clay. It's one of my favorites. So is rose clay. I've not used a lot of gold. It's just such a muted, pretty purple. I may add the rest of that because it's not as vibrant as the others. Okay. Now, the moment of truth. I'm going to pour in my my natural. Give that a stir. I'm going to bang this down to get any air bubbles out or air pockets. Move this out of the way. And now I'm going to start. Just set that there. That's my one funnel. And hope that this will go down through. Well, that worked. Okay. 
and then somewhere else I'm going to put some of the rows okay that worked get another funnel because it's not it's not thin enough to put in that bottle like I had wanted to so I'm going to use my little another one for the purple and I'm not using big big globs just enough to give it some color take me a while. And this is more of my rose and more of the gold. Okay, and now I guess you can see it's just kind of laying in there randomly. I'm going to Pour a little bit of the natural over them lightly. And bang it down. And start again. I love seashells and pebbles on the beach. They just, I love the variation in color. Okay, some more of the purple. And I don't know what this is going to look like. It's probably going to look like, what was she doing? But at least I can say I tried. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to top it with the white. That's probably all of the um, little pebbles I'm going to do. And the top, I'm just going to put the rest of the colors on there. because I'm, I don't think I have enough of the natural to do another layer. I'm always thinking, but that doesn't always mean I'm thinking right <laughs> or my plan is going to work. And this smells delicious. I, it's one of my friends um, who lives in Denmark. I sent her one. Uh, I sent her a package for Christmas a couple of years ago, and she said this one was her favorite. And um, so I was out of it the last time she ordered from me. And I told her that I would make some. So I'm just going to put some little droplets on here and there. This gold is so pretty. Oh, good grief. I'm just going to have to let it ring. All right, I think that's.
that's all I'm going to put on the top. And I'm going to get out my little, and just do some little loop-de-loos, for lack of a better word. At least it stayed manageable enough. To get some droplets in there to look like my pebbles. So I just need to stop. <laughs> I just need to stop. And um, I'll bring you back for the cut. This is what it looks like so far. See you in a little while. Hey, welcome back. I didn't bring you back while I was cutting it. Um, I forgot. <laughs> but I can tell you that um, exactly what I thought was going to happen did happen. I didn't use enough um, of the little droplets. Um, I still like what I got, even though there's not really a pebbly effect to it. I still love the colors. Um, I love the top. Um, I don't, there's just, and then the way it is down in here. I, I almost wish I had just left it alone. I still may do, um, take my seashell and do an imprint like I did the last time. Um, here's this one. You know, there's really no rhyme or reason to it. Um, I didn't use enough because I didn't think it was going to work, and I was right. You know, the little funnels just, I just didn't use enough. It smells wonderful. And um, like I said, I cut them chunkier. When they're not very tall, I cut them chunky. But I love the ones that have no color except for right there. I just think they're so pretty. Um, so that's the cut of Beachcomber. That's what I'm going to stick with. And um, I'm going to put some pictures up. And um, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching.